Hey everybody, welcome back. Today we're getting back onto the two CBXs that we're in the middle of building here. And uh, today I'm going to be going over the alternator, uh, both checking it and rebuilding it. And we're starting out here by checking the rotor. And what you do is you get a, a multimeter, you set it on the ohm setting, and you just touch the two contacts there. And you want it to read somewhere between four and five and a half or so. Um, and that shows you that the rotor is good. Now on this particular one that I'm checking here, uh, as you can see, it's only putting out 1.4, 1.5. So that rotor is no good. But the, but the first two that I checked are good. And this one here, as you can see there, it's 4.1, 4.2, uh, 4.0. The other one was over five, so um, those are good. Then the other thing you want to check is the uh, the stator itself. And you have a wire harness here that has three yellow wires right there in a row. And you want to, you want to check the continuity between those three wires. And again, you set it on the ohm setting. And then you just stick your contact in one. And then you want to get a reading. Usually it's somewhere between 0.5 and 1 or so. And then you uh, put it in the third wire. It's a little tricky. You have to kind of readjust sometimes. And as long as you get a reading like that, then, then you have continuity between the three and you're good to go on the stator or at least the you can show that the wires the that are wrapped in the stator are all are all uh connected and there's no breaks in them so these two rotors are good to go or the two um stators are good to go so here I have everything laid out and uh the other th part of this alternator are the brushes and the brushes wear out quite often on these CBXs the the bike is really rough on them so um, I have a couple of brand new ones here in the package and I'm just gonna kind of go through the procedure of replacing those brushes this is one of the biggest issues with the charging system on a CBX, but as long as you have a good rotor and good brushes, then, you know, the bike should be okay. And as long as you keep the thing running and have the battery charged up all the time, it's, it's really good to go. I mean, a lot of guys will replace the alternator with an aftermarket one, which I don't like. I don't like the way they look. And, uh, so on so anyway continuing on here with the brushes they're really easy to replace and you don't even have to remove the alternator from the bike to replace the uh, the brushes so it's a pretty easy procedure So you just unscrew the, the old ones and screw the new ones back in and it's, it's that easy. Now the two brushes are different so there, there is, they're not both exactly the same because of the bracket that holds them in. So you can see here that the brush is down to the wear mark. There's a wear mark on there which I'll show you on the new one. And this whole assembly is kind of small, so you kind of have to fumble with it there for a little bit. And it's a little challenging, but easy enough. And again, it's spring-loaded, so you have to kind of keep it under tension. And you can see the wear mark there on the brush.
there's the wear mark there and these are spring loaded and when it you know when you put it back in it it comes down to about the wear mark there and then you'll know that it's worn out by the time it gets to that mark so here they're both in now and then the uh the rotor the the brushes ride on these brass uh contact points here and i always scotch bright them to get them back smooth again and have a nice solid conductivity there so they clean up pretty quickly So then the other part of this alternator are the drive discs or the clutch. The, the, the alternator is a real unique design because you have, you have this part of the uh, part that bolts on to the engine itself, to the, to the primary shaft, and, there, and it's spring-loaded to take up the torque from the primary shaft. And as you can see here, it's kind of a an assembly that involves a number of different pieces. And I'll show you a diagram here in a second, but uh, you'll see that there's two washers there. Just like that. One of them is like a thrust, thrust a thrust washer and then the other is a washer for the spring and then it's got a spring retainer there and then these two plates kind of rub together acting like a clutch mechanism again to take uh, reduce the torque from the uh, shaft as you rev the engine and uh, CBXs have a, and there's the other part, they're bolted to the alternator itself. And then they, they mate together like this. And as you bolt it together, then it compresses the spring and so on. So, and the, the typical clutch noise that CBXs have, this is where it's coming from. A lot of people think it's the clutch basket or whatever, but that's where it's coming from. And here's a diagram showing the overall uh, assembly and then on the engine itself here's where it all comes together and as I explained the one the one plate goes on first with the spring and the retainer So the retainer goes on first up against the seal. Then your spring goes on. And then your first plate with the two washers. And that's spring loaded there. Then you go ahead and bolt up the rest of the alternator assembly. And you have to line up, line it up like that. But I'll show you with the cover on it here in a second. So you put it together with the cover on it and normally there'll be a, a uh, wire harness sticking out of that wire harness portion there. And you just line it up like that and then start putting your screws in and you have to uh, bind them down equally and I'll, I'll be going over that 
on the next video because on the next video I'm going to show how to clean all this stuff up and repaint it and make it look like brand new again so that when you bolt it up to the engine it looks like the rest of the engine does. But right now I'm just kind of going over the parts and pieces. And then before I actually put the uh, alternator back on I'm going to reassemble this portion of the engine and and uh, I'll be connecting the oil lines and the uh, shifter mechanism cover the, where the oil intake is and the the other covers and so on and again on the next video I'm going to be cleaning all this stuff up and repainting it and making it look really nice so and then I'll reassemble that whole thing and in the meantime I'm putting in uh, new rubber grommets and new acorn nuts and washers to the to the uh, covers that cover up you know some of the some of the ugliness there down there and these have little rubber grommets like I said and then they just kind of bolts on to the oil intake cover and shifter mechanism cover so I'm just showing kind of how the assembly goes together and then uh, then I'll be I'll be reconditioning these and repainting them so that they look like new again just like the rest of the engine and then I'll put a new seal here where the shifter uh, shaft is. So that's going to be it for this video. And on the next video, I'm going to be cleaning all that up, painting it, and then I'm going to recondition these shocks. And they look bad, but um, I'm going to clean all the rust off these and polish them up. And then I'll put new stickers on them. As you can see there, I've got some brand new stickers to put on there which can be ordered. There's a guy in Europe that has those. And uh, so the shocks will look like new. These are original OEM shocks. And they're not that great. You know, they're basically just a standard shock. But, you know, when, when you're doing a factory restoration like I do, you want to put the original shocks back on. And these are really, really nice stickers that go on there to kind of give it that final touch. There's the old sticker right there. They tend to fade over time. So they look really nice with the new ones on there. And then also in, in upcoming videos here on my Camaro, uh, the, I'm going to start building the engine for the Z28 Camaro. This is my 302 that I just got back from the machine shop. So anyway, stay tuned for all of that. And uh, thank you again for, for watching. And please like, subscribe, and share. really helps me out. And I'll be having another video here in the next couple of days. Thank you.